Hi, how are you, Dr. Moso in the house? It's Dr. Moso. Today, we want to talk about an interesting topic. We want to talk about a great Zimbabwe. We have got a person, an O-level person, that we want to do on Great Zimbabwe. What happened on Great Zimbabwe? Here is our person. Give any five social groups in the Great Zimbabwe state. What were the social groups that were in the Great Zimbabwe state? So we had a social group which was called the Hunters. The hunters, those that were good at hunting, they were known as the hunters. Then we also had another social group which was called the gatherers. These were involved in the gathering of fruits, gathering of edible bulbs, gathering of honey, a gathering of insects, a gathering of termites. They were known as the gatherers. We also had another social group which was called the uh, traders. Remember, the people at Great Zimbabwe, they were involved in trade. They traded with the foreigners, the Arabs, the Israeli, the Portuguese. And the, these people who were trading with the foreigners, they were called the traders. We also had people who were good at keeping animals. They were known as the headers. We are not talking about headering the people. No, we are talking about those people now who were good in our uh, keeping our uh, cattle, sheep, and our goats. They were known as the what are the uh, headers. Then we also had also another group which was also called the miners. These were involved in mining. They were called the miners. So you can at least these the hunters, the gatherers, the traders. Headers and also uh, the miners. You can also add another one, the county haters, those who were involved in agriculture. So these are the social groups that we had at Great Zimbabwe. Let's go to part B. Outline, so we're going to outline six factors which led to the rise of Great Zimbabwe state. Which were the factors that led the Great Zimbabwe state to rise? So let's talk about these um, factors. So we see uh, that these factors included agriculture. It led the state to rise. The soils at Great Zimbabwe, they were fertile. The area received adequate rainfall. So that led to the rise of Great Zimbabwe. We talk also about what a pastoralism. Pastoralism, we're talking about the keeping of what of cattle. We see that the area at Great Zimbabwe had good grazing pastures. The area received adequate rainfall, so it led them to be in a position of having cattle, sheep, and goats. Why? It was because of good uh, grazing pastures that were at Great Zimbabwe, leading to the rise of the wealth of the state. Then we also talk about our trade. Trade also led the state to rise, to be a prominent Why? It is because they were trading with foreigners. And from this trade now, they were in a position of getting different what, items. Items they were getting from trade now, it led the state to be known. It led the state to be prominent. It led the state to rise. We talk about a mining. Mining also played an important part. The area, it goes in fact, it had alluvial soils. Alluvial soils which were good at mining. They mined gold, they mined copper, they mined tin. So that on its own led the area to be known why? Because of the mining activities that were being conducted at a great Zimbabwe. We also talk about the army. The army was powerful, the army was strong, the army became prominent, the army conquered, it subdued the neighboring tribes. That again led to the rise of the ones of the state. Then eventually we talk about religion. Religion also led the state to rise, according to Matenda. The substance beds, the Bumwe beds, those beds were so popular, they were so common, they predicted about the current and the future events. So many people left their areas. Why? They wanted to know about today, tomorrow, and forever. So that again led the state to rise. Substance beds, now uh, we see uh, that they were so important in the rise of a great Zimbabwe. So these are the factors that led to the rise of great Zimbabwe. But as you are writing this now, you are supposed to outline what 
give a point. When you give a point now, you explain. So your point becomes your B1, your explanation becomes your uh, B2. You talk about a point, you explain it. Explanation now, it becomes your B2. So that you can get 12 out of 12. Because here, you only talk about six factors. So a factor plus explanation is B1, B2. A factor plus explanation is B1, B2. So that you are going to get 12 out of 12. Thank you so much. It's a Dr. Muslim.